I mean, somebody <laughs> Dee Dee and then kidnapped Gypsy. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Crew, Crew Tribe. Tribe. Let's just get on with it. If you are new here, hello, my name is Sarah and what I do here is tell you a terrible story to ruin your day <laughs> and put on my makeup at the same time. So if that sounds like fun to you, you're in the right place. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on all of your notifications, and then that way you will never miss one of my terrible stories. Spoiler alert, <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard Anderson has been released from prison after serving eight of her 10 year sentence after pleading guilty to the second degree of her own mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. So with the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case, there's a very small number of people who've never heard about it at all. Don't know anything. Most people have at least heard about it. And if you're watching this, then you probably know a ton about the case and have watched every minute of footage like I have. You've probably seen the Hulu scripted series. 10 out of 10 recommend. It's excellent. You've probably seen the HBO documentary, the Dr. Phil interviews, the Amazon Prime documentary. And there's another docu-series, like a three episode docu-series that is coming, I think tomorrow, the day after this video post on Lifetime. And that includes um, in jail interviews with Gypsy herself. But since Miss Blanchard Anderson has been released, I feel like it's a really good time to, you know, dig into the story crew crime style. And I've gone back and forth with the best way to tell this story. Um, and since it's so crazy, we really should just start from the very beginning. Claudine Didi Pitre was born on May 3rd, 1967 in Chack Bay, Louisiana to Claude and Emma Pitre. So Didi was one of six children growing up in rural Louisiana, like way rural. They were way down in the bayou in Golden Meadow, which is a town southeast of Homa. So way out there. Dee Dee's mom, Emma, was kind of a troubled woman. You know, she had sticky fingers. Sometimes she would steal people's clothing from the laundromat. So she was in and out of court for shoplifting. And apparently the apple didn't fall far from the tree because Dee Dee started getting herself into trouble too. She would steal from family members, um, open up credit cards in people's names without them knowing about it. You get it. But as she grew up, she somehow pulled it together enough to get training as a nurse's aide and she began working. In 1990, Dee Dee entered into a romantic relationship with a local boy named Rod Blanchard. Dee Dee and I met at the uh, Golden Alley one night. Met up again a couple of weeks later and we started dating then. He was a boy. Okay, he was a 17 year old high school student. It was definitely a sexual relationship. <laughs> and Dee Dee became pregnant like almost immediately. Being from the South, I guess, it was, I was raised where, you know, you got a girl pregnant and, you know, you got married. There was no other question about what you did. Rod, to his credit, wanted to take responsibility for his new family and decided to marry Dee Dee. And together they chose the name for their soon to be daughter, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Now the name Gypsy Rose, I found a lot of conflicting information about the origin of this name. The interwebs say that Rod was a Guns N' Roses fan, but there's nothing Gypsy related um, to GNR. And uh, I checked with an actual Guns N' Roses expert. But, you know, come to think of it, maybe that's just where her middle name, Rose, comes from. <laughs> Duh. It's largely thought that the uh, name Gypsy comes from the famous burlesque performer, Gypsy Rose Lee. Honestly, I just think that Dee Dee thought it was a cool name. I don't think it's that deep. I will note that the term Gypsy is actually considered to be a racial slur for the Romani people. That is not at all who we are talking about today. They actually have nothing to do with the story, but I wanted to make sure to identify that I know what that is. No harm meant at all by saying Gypsy a million times in this video. It's the girl's actual name. Okay. Well, Rod pretty quickly realized that this marriage was a mistake. He said that he woke up on his 18th birthday and it all hit him like a ton of bricks. He was not in love with Dee Dee and they had gotten married for the wrong reasons. If anybody wakes up on their 18th birthday, married. It's a mistake. Okay, so they split up actually before the baby was born, but teenage Rod never stopped supporting Dee Dee or baby Gypsy, who was born on July 17, 1991. But Dee Dee wanted desperately to get back together with Rod, but 
it was over. After Rod and Dee Dee broke up, Dee Dee moved back home with her parents into her dad's house. And this wasn't the optimal arrangement because she didn't have the best relationship with them. <laughs> and to be clear, when the baby was born, she might have been like, like a smidge premature, but was otherwise perfectly healthy. By the time she was three months old, Dee Dee said that something was wrong. She said that baby Gypsy would stop breathing in the middle of the night, you know, when she was sleeping and she was convinced it was sleep apnea. Dee Dee essentially took up residency in the hospital. The doctors did rounds and rounds of tests and they put the baby on a sleep monitor, but they didn't find anything wrong. Dee Dee said it must be some kind of chromosomal defect and it was only going to get worse. Now remember, Dee Dee was a trained nurse's aide, so she had training. Trained nurses aides have training. Imagine that. The point is she knew what kinds of questions to ask. Um, she could remember and repeat back these like complicated medical terms and she wasn't intimidated at all by the doctors or scared of the unknown. She was a very strong advocate for her baby. Give me back my baby. Almost too strong. Do your job and swaddle this baby. But anyway, things at home weren't any better. And this part of the timeline is actually pretty wiggly for me, you know? I'm not quite sure where Dee Dee and Gypsy lived for the first few years, but it seems that Dee Dee was living at her dad's house until like the late 90s. Might have been off and on, whatever, doesn't matter. Dee Dee's relationship with her mother and father was strained and her mother was actually not in good health. Dee Dee was the one who was taking care of her and we now know that she was not doing a good job. Dee Dee wasn't giving her anything to eat. We now know that she was actually withholding food from her and letting her lie in her own filth for long periods of time. She actually died at age 59 on June 5th, 1997, while at home with Dee Dee. Ask her sister, you think Dee Dee had anything to do with her, her mom's death? And she, you know, said, now I wonder. Meanwhile, Rod had actually remarried by then and had two more children. He and his new wife, Christy, maintained an excellent relationship with Gypsy. They saw her often for the first 10 years of her life. Rod was also very, very reliable with his child support payments and gifts for Christmas and birthday and, you know, any time Gypsy wanted something, he came through. And this financial support for Gypsy actually continues for like this entire story, which when you watch the Hulu scripted series, you know, for dramatic effect, they make him seem like he's an absent father, not the case, not the case. When Gypsy was around seven or eight years old, she was riding with her grandpa on his motorcycle and they had a very minor accident where Gypsy, you know, scraped her knee. Dee Dee called an ambulance, emergency, hospital, the whole thing. Dee Dee insisted that Gypsy was unable to walk and needed a wheelchair. One of Gypsy's cousins, Bobby Petre, would later tell a journalist that to the rest of the family, Gypsy was fine. He even remembers Gypsy pushing her cousins around in her wheelchair and jumping on the trampoline with her. When Dee Dee would see them playing, she would yell at Gypsy to get back in her chair. And he also said that sometimes when Gypsy would see Dee Dee coming, she would collapse to the ground and like crawl back to her wheelchair like her legs stopped working. <laughs> By this time, Dee Dee was also claiming, you know, a, a long list of ailments that Gypsy had, but we're getting there. Dee Dee's father, Claude, later remarried a woman named Laura. And while living with them, Dee Dee contributed to the household by doing chores around the house and also by preparing the meals. Well, Laura started getting sick. Hmm. She actually got so sick that she couldn't get out of bed for like months. And Dee Dee was taking care of her. Remember, she had that nursing training. Well, at some family gathering, somebody in the family called out how weird they thought Dee Dee's parenting was and how weird it was regarding Gypsy's constant hospital visits and all these weird rules about food and everything, you know, despite... Gypsy appearing to be perfectly fine. And how suspicious it was that Laura's illness wasn't improving under her care. After that, either Dee Dee was kicked out or, you know, decided to leave. But either way, she severed ties with her family and moved to Slidell. Dee Dee also never kind of stopped getting herself into trouble, stealing and all that stuff. She was writing bad checks as well and um, started using aliases, you know, spelling her name slightly different, going by entirely different names. All of that was really meant to make it harder for her to get caught, essentially, which didn't work 
you know, lots of mugshots for Dee Dee. In addition to those shenanigans, we now know, according to Laura herself, that Dee Dee was actively poisoning her. She was putting Roundup weed killer in Laura's food. Are you fucking kidding me? After Dee Dee left, Laura made a full recovery and Dee Dee never faced any charges. Okay, so Dee Dee and Gypsy moved to Slidell and they moved into public housing. Dee Dee wasn't working, you know, as Gypsy needed full-time care and had to be homeschooled. And as long as Gypsy needed a full-time caretaker, Dee Dee was also eligible for certain kinds of government assistance. So according to Dee Dee, under her care, Gypsy suffered from a long list of things, including sleep apnea, asthma, weird allergies, constant infections in her ears, poor vision, seizures, muscular dystrophy, intellectual disabilities, developmental delays, and cancer. and cancer. She was the one who relayed to the doctors all of Gypsy's symptoms, even if the tests and biopsies didn't align. The doctors treated these conditions, they prescribed medications, they performed surgeries. Surgeries, plural like so many surgeries. <laughs> Gypsy saw a variety of specialists, mostly at Tulane Medical Center and the Children's Hospital of New Orleans, and I know what you're thinking. How could the doctors possibly treat diseases that don't exist? I wondered the same thing. <laughs> Like, this is crazy talk. Well, test results and things like that are only part of a diagnosis. You know, doctors have to rely on what the patients tell them, and when the patient is a small child or a baby, they can't talk. They have to rely on what the parent says. Also, once Gypsy was actually old enough to talk, she was under strict instructions from Dee Dee to not volunteer any information to anyone. Dee Dee was the one who handled all of these medical details, and she did it with confidence. So Gypsy was on a ton of medicine. You know, some of the medications caused terrible side effects. For example, her anti-seizure medicine that she was taking for seizures that she wasn't having. It complicated the situation in her mouth that also was part of some treatments that she didn't need. And her teeth rotted right out of her head. As Gypsy grew older, her list of ailments and required treatments just grew and grew. And it became harder for Rod to spend time with her. He would make arrangements to visit or spend time together, but Dee Dee would change plans at the last minute or not respond at all. Then she would later cover her tracks by explaining that Gypsy had been in the hospital. But despite all that, it seemed like Gypsy was a super happy kid, you know, with a positive attitude and this tiny little voice that people were totally endeared by. It is perfect town. Well, like most people. Hot take, I thought it was intensely creepy. All right, so fast forward to 2005, Hurricane Katrina blasted over Louisiana and the Gulf Coast, cutting off power for weeks. Flooding, devastation, it was terrible. Well, Dee Dee's apartment in Slidell and all of Gypsy's medical records were totally destroyed. So Gypsy ended up in a shelter set up for people with special needs in Covington. One of the doctors that was volunteering there had come from the Ozarks in Missouri and suggested that Dee Dee and Gypsy start fresh in her home state. Lost souls who were meant to have been born and raised in Aurora. Gypsy and Dee Dee were relocated by way of airlift, how dramatic, to Missouri in September of 2005, and they rented a house in Aurora while they waited for a more permanent arrangement. So Habitat for Humanity had heard this incredibly sad story, you know, Gypsy being this severely disabled and sick child and her saint of a mother slash caretaker, and now they're displaced after the worst storm in American history. So Habitat was working on a house for them that was scheduled for delivery in March of 2008. It took something like a hurricane to make us have a happy ending. Dee Dee was happy enough just having medical care for Gypsy. She says she never expected this. While they were waiting for this house, Gypsy and Dee Dee were gifted multiple trips by charitable organizations. You know, lodge vacations for cancer patients, Make-A-Wish Foundation trips, free trips to Disney World, concerts, speaking engagements at these benefit galas. And when you see all this, wherever Gypsy was, Dee Dee was literally within arm's reach. When you watch back this old news footage of them, Dee Dee was like always, always touching her. I mean, it's all like, it's just a lot, right? I mean, especially knowing everything we know now. All of those medical conditions were like full on bullshit. 
and Dee Dee was manipulating these doctors and straight up abusing Gypsy, making her sick, keeping her sick, forcing her to undergo treatment for conditions she didn't have, you know, drugging her, shaving her head. When you see all this footage, there's this poor bald child looking pitiful. And you know what? It's all very purposeful. Keep this illusion going that there's this poor sick child and how can you deny it when she looks like that? I mean, have they made this clear yet that Dee Dee was full of shit? From the time Gypsy was born, you know, Dee Dee's delusions surrounding Gypsy's health just got worse and worse. Dude, she had her on a feeding tube. <laughs> Who installed this? The girl wasn't allowed to eat real food for years. She was on like a liquid diet well into her 20s. Dee Dee infantilized Gypsy so much. You know, she dressed her up in these like Disney princess costumes, dressed her up like, like a toddler. She started lying about how old Gypsy really was. Like the years went on and Gypsy never got any older. They stay the same age. <laughs> The charging documents in this case actually do indicate that there were three known birthdays for Gypsy Blanchard. And I don't mean like three birthdays a year. I mean like she kept changing it, pushing it back to make her younger and younger. And if Gypsy ever went off script about any of this stuff, Dee Dee would be, of course, right there, squeezing the shit out of her hand, the signal for shut the fuck up. There was one doctor in Missouri who smelled the bullshit, Dr. Bernardo Flasterstein. In 2007, he was consulting on some neurology issues for the now 14-year-old Gypsy, and the math wasn't mathin'. He wrote in his case notes, quote, the mother is not a good historian. He also wrote in the notes that Gypsy's physical condition did not match the diagnosis for muscular dystrophy. And you know, neither did any of the tests. He also stated in the notes that there was a strong possibility for Munchausen syndrome by proxy. But if you look at a lot of these social work notes, Dee Dee's requesting medical records. She would have gotten a copy of this letter. Dee Dee stopped bringing Gypsy to see him after that. So Munchausen syndrome by proxy is also called induced illness. This is a psychological disorder marked by attention-seeking behavior by a caregiver for exaggerated or made-up conditions of the person that's in their care. When you look up the symptoms of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, literally every one of them are present in this case. Well, despite Dr. Flasterstein's very astute observation, he didn't pursue the case, and he has since told journalists that he was pressured by the other doctors in the network to treat the Blanchards with golden gloves. Everybody around him bought their story, totally, and even if he had reported the case to social services, they wouldn't believe him. Which, is that reason enough to not speak up? I don't know. It's easy for us to say. Okay, so by the spring of 2008, Gypsy and Dee Dee had moved into their new free home in Springfield, Missouri. It had a wheelchair ramp for Gypsy and they painted it pink, her favorite color. They were reasonably friendly with their neighbors, particularly Amy Pinnegar and Kim Blanchard, no relation. Everyone was just amazed at how Dee Dee alone cared for this unending medical problems of this poor, sick, disabled child. And Dee Dee made sure to tell anybody who would listen that Gypsy's father had totally abandoned them. He was a total deadbeat, drug addict, alcoholic, abusive to them, which to be clear, not true. And as Gypsy grew up into a teenager, it started to become harder for Dee Dee to control her as easily as she used to. Gypsy became quite friendly with Amy's daughter, Aaliyah. She and Aaliyah would spend time discussing various things, including boys. Aaliyah was like big sister vibes, you know? And Gypsy was getting older after all. She would ask Aaliyah things like how to kiss a boy, how to meet boys, you get it. And remember, Gypsy was not socialized in the same way as, you know, other people her age. She didn't go to school, she had no friends. She was very insulated, very restricted, very protected. Probably not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. And Dee Dee did not like that relationship at all. She didn't like Aaliyah's influence over Gypsy and more so that she wasn't in on it. She couldn't control it. She told Aaliyah that Gypsy had the mind of a child, you know, and it was inappropriate for her to be talking to her about such teenage things. On top of all of these fake conditions and control that she had over Gypsy, Dee Dee would also sedate her. Remember, Gypsy also had the feeding tube port, so it was very easy for Dee Dee to just inject her with things if she couldn't get her to swallow it. So she could knock her out, essentially, and she would also physically abuse her. She would hit her with hands, she would hit her with coat hangers, mommy dearest style. Why? 
Why? She would restrain her, like literally tie her up, tie her to the bed so that she couldn't get out of it. And Dee Dee put bells on the doors of the house so that she could hear if Gypsy ever tried to escape. There was actually one anonymous report made to Child Protective Services in 2009, but when the police arrived, Dee Dee easily convinced them that it was just a mistake. You know, of course, Gypsy had the mind of a seven-year-old and she wasn't a reliable source. Never mind all these power of attorneys that Dee Dee had. But you know, look around. Obviously, Gypsy has major medical issues that are being carefully managed. Dee Dee also explained her multiple aliases because they definitely found those and asked about it. She said that that was the way that she made it harder for her abusive ex-husband to find them. Ugh. So as Gypsy got older, as I mentioned, it was harder for Dee Dee to control her. And Gypsy would wait until Dee Dee went to sleep at night and then she would sneak out of bed and get online on the computer to talk to people. So Gypsy had many secret Facebook accounts. I think there was like five. She also had dating profiles on multiple dating sites where she would speak to guys. The lights were sort of coming on for her, essentially. She wanted to have friends, you know? She wanted to leave the house without her mom. She also knew that she wasn't as sick as her mom wanted her to think she was. She would ask, like, why am I taking the seizure medication? I don't have seizures. And then her mom would say, oh, you had one the other night. You just don't remember it because it's a seizure. That's what happens. I mean, at the very least, Gypsy knew she could walk because she would get out of the wheelchair and walk around inside the house. Just imagine how mind melted she must have been, you know, she doesn't know which which end is up. She didn't even know how old she was, <laughs> you know, but she was starting to come around even if she didn't really have the right tools to figure out what was safe or not safe. Okay, so there's like a ton of details in the story and I'm just gonna kind of skip over some of them, like attempted escapes, things like that, running away, um, but you get it. Dee Dee was in control and Gypsy was over it. All right, so fast forward to 2012, Gypsy had met a guy on a dating website named Nicholas Godjohn. God Godjohn? He was around her age, but he lived in Wisconsin and he was totally into her. We now know that Nicholas is on the autism spectrum. He has um, a history of some other mental illnesses and a criminal record. Well, these two would stay up late at night, you know, talking online while Dee Dee slept. And this went on for about two years before Gypsy confided in her neighbor and friend, Aaliyah. Now, Aaliyah warned her that you can't really trust people online. <laughs> Gypsy wasn't deterred. So she and Nick kept in touch primarily via text or like online chat. They talked about eloping and having children together and they even picked out the names for these future children. Welcome to the world, baby Ozempic Annalie. Well, Nick claimed to have multiple personalities, you know, that would describe different sides of himself. He also was very much into BDSM. And the messaging between he and Gypsy definitely su supports all that. So that's as far as I'm going to go there. Okay. Well, in March 2015, Gypsy devised a plan to actually meet Nick in person. So Gypsy and Dee Dee had planned an outing to go see the live action remake of Cinderella at a theater in Springfield, Missouri, you know, where they lived. They planned to wear costumes, you know, it was going to be a whole thing. By the way, Gypsy was like 23, 24 years old by this time. Well, Miss Gypsy had actually arranged and paid for Nick to travel from Wisconsin to Springfield and then to casually bump into them at the movie theater. That would be kind of the story that Gypsy could use to introduce Nick to her mom so that they could use that as like how they met, you know, how romantic and cute. And then that way they'd be able to continue their relationship in real life. It's pretty pretty smart plan, actually. You know, Nick made it to the theater. He was dressed up like Prince Charming. <laughs> At some point, um, while the movie was running, they scurried off to the bathroom and uh, did the sex. A scandal. Dee Dee didn't know about that, obviously, but after that encounter, Gypsy was a little bit more free to talk about Nick without having to hide it from her mom so much. And Dee Dee hated it. She called Gypsy a slut and a whore. Rude. And essentially this just like ignited a two week long argument. Gypsy was pleading to be able to, you know, actually have a boyfriend and Dee Dee was just like not, nope, absolutely not, non-starter. She was also planning for Gypsy to have another unnecessary surgery, this time on her throat. So maybe she was making some kind of plans for, you know, Gypsy to 
be permanently silenced? Who knows? Either way, Gypsy had gotten to a point where she felt like she only had two options. One was to become pregnant by Nick so that Dee Dee would have to accept him as part of their life, or for Dee Dee to die. And Gypsy was desperate to get away from this controlling life, and she also had this guy, Nick, who was willing to do anything for her. Can you love her? Oh, do I ever. No, the truth is I worship her. So I know you There's do. no way, there's no way I wouldn't do it on her. I know. I don't think for her. I know you do. So, together they made a plan. Nick was going to kill Dee Dee. So Gypsy, who had become pretty good at getting into Dee Dee's bank accounts and moving things around, took hundreds of dollars from Dee Dee to pay for travel and supplies. And in June 2015, Nick returned to Springfield. So after Dee Dee fell asleep that night, Gypsy let Nick into the house. She gave him the duct tape, gloves, and knife that they had purchased. Knowing that he was about to use it on her mother, Gypsy then hid in the bathroom and covered her ears so she wouldn't have to listen to the sound of her mother's screams. Nick crept into Dee Dee's bedroom as she slept, and then he attacked her, stabbing her 17 times. After the deed was done, Nick and Gypsy retired to Gypsy's bedroom to do the deed. Jesus Christ. Then they fled the scene, holing up in a days in motel room just outside of town. They also took the murder weapon with them and they put it into a box and mailed it to Nick's house in Wisconsin because they didn't want to get caught with it while they were traveling, which is kind of smart, but also like, why not just fling it into the woods, into a dumpster? As much foresight and planning that had gone on with this, you know, just not, not sophisticated. You know what I'm saying? Well, then these two crazy lovebirds arrived in Wisconsin and Gypsy decided to post a status update to Dee Dee's Facebook page. Again, why? Well, of course, friends of the Blanchards were alarmed by this you know, and they called the police who quickly obtained a warrant to be able to enter the home because nobody would answer the door. Once inside, they found Dee Dee's body. We found Dee Dee Blanchard uh, deceased and uh, of a violent nature. They also found Gypsy's wheelchair, but no Gypsy. I mean, somebody murdered Dee Dee and then kidnapped Gypsy. Uh, you know, I was shocked. I was like, what, really? Couldn't understand it. Why would somebody do this to this child? You know, no wheelchair, no medication. Holy shit, like how is she supposed to survive without like her treatment and supplies and oxygen and all of these things? Well, Aaliyah, the neighbor who knew about Gypsy's secret boyfriend, came forward and told the police what she knew. Once she shared the information with the investigators, they pretty much immediately located Nicholas Goadjohn in Wisconsin, but they also traced that the Bitch is Dead Facebook page to his IP address. The police arrived at the Gojon home and both he and Gypsy surrendered without any incident. And when Gypsy Rose Blanchard walked unassisted out of that house, the police <gasps> gasped. That's when they learned there was nothing wrong with her. No leukemia, no asthma, no seizures, no paralysis. Okay, so the cat is out of the bag. And now that the truth was out about Gypsy's actual health, and how Dee Dee carried on this incredible lie for so many years. Gypsy crying through the proceedings and shocking many of those who knew her because she was walking and not using a wheelchair. The perception of Gypsy as a cold-blooded murderer changed to that of a long-term victim of incredible child abuse. She's calculating, she is manipulative, um, and these are all things that are created by what her mother taught her and did. After the courts were able to completely review all of Gypsy's medical records, they decided to not seek first-degree murder charges or any maximum sentence. That went for Gypsy and for Nick. In July 2015, Gypsy Rose Blanchard entered a plea agreement. I feared her more than I feared anyone else. I started to piece things together when I was about 19 years old. I didn't think that anyone would believe me. She pled guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. 
Now, Nicholas Godjohn's case wasn't so simple. I mean, if you can consider anything simple in this case. Since Nick was not subjected to this long-term abuse, um, the court just wasn't as sympathetic. The key for the prosecution was to show that Godjohn, looking much heavier since his arrest, had the mental capacity to make his own decisions, autism or not. He and Gypsy both agreed that he was the one who killed Dee Dee. You know, he initiated this murder plot. In late 2018, Nicholas Godjohn's trial was complete and the jury returned a guilty verdict for first degree murder and he was later sentenced to life in prison. If the death penalty is not sought in Missouri, that is the required sentence. Once Gypsy got to prison, she actually said that she felt more freedom there than she ever did in her house with her mother, Dee Dee. And her dad and stepmom say that, you know, her being afforded therapy and tools and classes to learn what happened to her and learn how to deal with it has been very helpful for her. On June 27th, 2022, the 30-year-old Gypsy Rose Blanchard married 36-year-old Ryan Anderson of St. Charles, Louisiana in a prison ceremony. They'd been pen pals for a year and a half before making their relationship official. I mean, as relationshipy you can get when one person's incarcerated. Ryan is a middle school special ed teacher and he and a friend decided to start writing letters to famous prisoners. This is during COVID times. So one was writing to the Tiger King. And he was writing to Gypsy Rose. And this was just sort of a gag. He never expected to hear anything back. And then he did. He and Gypsy exchanged letters for a while until that escalated to phone calls and then that turned into visits and then that turned into, you know, marriage. That escalated quickly. And you can make of that what you will. She says that she's not glad that her mother is dead and she's not proud of what she did. She regrets it every single day. I didn't hate her. You wanted her dead. Yes, but it was not because I hated her, it was because I wanted to escape her. But Gypsy wants her story to be a cautionary tale. People in abusive relationships don't need to resort to murder. There's always another way. So Gypsy Rose Blanchard served eight of those 10 years of her sentence and on December 28th, 2023, she was released on parole. I mean, at the end of the day, a woman was murdered and there's no way that anybody in their right mind would say that that's okay. However, Dee Dee's own family doesn't seem to be too busted up about it. Do you think she got what she deserved? Yes. Yeah, she got what she deserved. She got cremated. She said, what you want me to do with the ashes? I do throw that in the toilet. <laughs> and that, for now, is the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard Anderson. I'm filming this on New Year's Eve, so I am all ready to sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> if you are interested to know any of the makeup that I used in today's Luke, just Luke down in the description box. Everything is linked for you. There's plenty of things that I used today that I think are no longer available, including this bad boy, but um, I will link something similar if it's not available. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week and you can follow me on all the other socials as well. That is it for now. I will catch you next time in the next video. Bye. The shirt is available in the merch store, by the way, linked down below. Then they fled the steam, the steam. Oh, come on. Pete, you are a brat good at getting into to 2002 nope <clears throat> Murray has a new collar with a bell on it we call it his jingle necklace hi Murray fall out on my face at all who we are hey 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 Fuck you up, Pete. Pete! Birth, birth, birthdays, you know, ways to, for, like, why, 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 why? Pete!